This is the first in a series of uh, lessons on classical thermodynamics uh, for engineering students. Um, this first uh, lesson is going to be on the use of units, both SI and English units. And we're going to talk about how mass and force differ in each unit and how we can calculate energy in both SI and English units. Now, each set of units has its pros and cons. SI units, of course, are very regular in that units are multiples of 10. And English units, of course, with their inches, feet, uh, yards, and miles are hardly uh, uh, multiples of 10. But they have their advantages as well. Let's begin our study of units by talking about the difference between mass and force, or mass and weight, as we sometimes call it. And let's start with SI units and look at Newton's second law, F equals ma. But if we're talking specifically about uh, the weight of a mass exposed to a gravitational field, we can rewrite this as weight is equal to mass times acceleration of gravity. Now, in SI units, the basic unit of force is known as a Newton. And a Newton is defined in terms of basic units of mass, length, and time. So a Newton is defined to be a kilogram meter per second squared. So as a simple uh, problem, what does a kilogram weigh on the surface of the Earth? Well, if our mass is one kilogram and the gravitational field on the surface of the Earth is 9.807 meters per second squared, then we can plug these values into Newton's second law. <clears throat> and then we get a weight of 9.807 kilogram meters per second squared. But we notice that uh, kilogram meter per second squared is the definition of our basic unit of force, a Newton. And so the weight of one kilogram on the surface of the Earth is 9.807 Newtons. Let's look at how uh, weight or the basic unit of force is defined in English units. It's done very, very differently than uh, SI units, and this causes uh, problems for my students quite often. Let's look at wh what uh, the basic unit of force is, which is one pound force. And it is defined as the weight exerted by a mass of one pound mass when subjected to a standard Earth gravitational field. So we notice that it is not defined in uh, basic English units of uh, mass, length, and time as the Newton is. So given a mass of one pound mass and a standard Earth gravitational field on the surface of the Earth, which is uh, 32.174 feet per second squared, by definition, we have a, a weight of this mass would be one pound force. Now, Newton's second law uh, yields the following when we plug these values in. We have the weight, one pound force by definition, is equal to one pound mass times the acceleration of gravity. Well, we have a problem right here. Neither the numbers nor the units on the left side of this equation are the same as they are on the right side of the equation. Okay, so right now we have a, we have a dilemma. Uh, this just isn't working. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes my students believe that a unit of force, the pound force, is defined the way a Newton is in uh, the SI units. And so they say, oh, a pound force is a pound mass foot per second squared. Well, if that were true, then in fact, uh, the units on the left side would equal the units on the right side of this equality. However, we would have just calculated that the weight of one pound mass on the Earth's surface uh, is over 32 pounds force. And we know that this is not true. So we need to solve this problem um, according to the definition given for the basic unit of force. And we're going to do that by introducing a proportionality constant into this and many other equations, as we shall see. And we call this proportionality constant g sub c, and we'll introduce it uh, into the denominator of Newton's second law. So we now have that weight is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity 
divided by this constant g sub c. So we can now solve for the value of g sub c given the basic definition of uh, force. We have g sub c is mass times the acceleration of gravity divided by the defined weight. So for one pound mass on the surface of the Earth, well, we have a standard uh, gravity of 32.174 feet per second squared. The weight is defined to be one pound force. Simplifying, we get G sub C is 32.174 foot pounds mass per pound force second squared. Let's try this again. Let's go back to Newton's second law where we've added this G sub C uh, constant and see what it provides. If we want to know what the weight is of one pound mass, so we multiply by G, the acceleration of gravity, and divide by G sub C, which is a universal constant. And this simplifies to weight is equal to one pound force, which is exactly what we needed it to be. Let's look more closely at this ratio of G over G sub C. Units of uh, the acceleration of gravity are feet per second squared. And G sub C has units of foot pound mass per pound force second squared. These terms simplify to simply pounds force per pound mass. So G over G sub C, uh, when you multiply uh, times mass, you're simply multiplying the mass by pounds force per pound mass. And on the surface of the Earth, uh, this G over G sub C will have a value of one pound force per pound mass. Let's move on and look at how we can calculate various forms of mechanical energy, both kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is defined as one half uh, mass times velocity squared. Potential energy is mass times acceleration of gravity times the height of the mass above some data. In SI units, um, the kinetic energy units will be kilograms times meters per second quantity squared. And potential energy will have units of kilograms, meters per second squared times meter. Both of these reduce to the same set of units. Uh, both kinetic and potential energy ultimately have units of kilograms, meters squared per second squared. But the basic unit of force, or excuse me, of energy in the SI world is a Newton meter. Well, fortunately, this kilogram meter squared per second square reduces to Newton meters very easily. So we can factor out a meter and we'll get kilogram meters per second squared times meter. And we recognize a kilogram meter per second squared is a Newton. So this term is in fact Newton meters. Now we also may wish to convert the Newton meters to joules or kilojoules. We know that a joule is a Newton meter and that there are a thousand joules in the kilojoules. So converting to meters to joules or kilojoules is quite simple. Let's do the same uh, problem, kinetic and potential energy equations, in English units where the basic unit of energy is a foot-pound force. We have the same equations for kinetic and potential energy, but the units of kinetic energy are gonna be pound mass times the quantity feet per second squared, and potential energy will have units of pound mass feet per second squared times feet. Both of these reduce to the same term, however, pounds mass feet squared per second squared. Now, how are we going to get pounds mass feet squared per second squared uh, in units of foot pounds force? Well, the solution is quite simple. We simply divide the kinetic energy and potential energy terms by G sub C. Let's look at how this works. In kinetic energy, uh, we have uh, mass times velocity squared, pounds mass feet squared per second squared. We'll divide it by G sub C, which has units of foot pounds mass per pound force second squared, and we get foot pounds force. The same thing happens with potential energy. When we divide units of mass times the acceleration of gravity times h by g sub c, it quickly reduces to foot-pounds force. 
Let's look at another common problem, calculating unit weights. And let's start with SI units. Let's use water as an example, where we'll take the density of water to be 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And we note that density is mass per unit volume. Now, unit weight, on the other hand, is weight per unit volume. And we calculate unit weight by multiplying density times the acceleration of gravity. So in uh, this particular example, uh, unit weight is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter times the acceleration of gravity. And we get that uh, gamma is 9807 newtons per cubic meter. Notice that kilograms meters per second squared gives us this term newton. Let's do the same thing in English units, where we'll take uh, water density as uh, 62.4 pounds mass per cubic foot. So unit weight is going to be the same definition. Uh, unit weight will be rho g. Uh, however, we recognize that well, since we're multiplying by g, we're going to need our proportionality constant g sub c included. So that essentially, uh, in English units, we'll calculate unit weight as rho g over g sub c. So let's do this. We have the unit weight is equal to the density of water times the acceleration of gravity divided by g sub c. And if we look more closely at this g over g sub c, well, if we just reduced this term, we would see that g over g sub c reduces to one pound force per pound mass. Well, this pound mass will cancel with that pound mass, and we get a result that unit weight of water is 62.4 pounds force per cubic foot, which is exactly what we expected it to be. I have included some uh, basic uh, SI unit conversions that you'll find useful in solving thermodynamic problems. I've also included some basic uh, unit conversions uh, for English units. And finally, uh, provided some basic uh, SIA to English unit conversions or the other way around. Uh, I hope you find these useful.